what I have here is the SK2000 shell, Injustice shell. And what I want to do is I want to refurbish it. But finding some of the old parts can be tough. So what I want to do is walk through how we can restore a helmet like this using some parts that we can pick up from a hardware store. Easy to find. Okay, what I have here is the foam and cardboard piece that comes out of the front side of an SK2000 small. Now, the small uh, is actually for the front piece and all the foam and, and the uh, cardboard is the same size for uh, medium and for large even. Uh, the only difference is the thickness of this foam. They make it thicker for the smaller sizes, but you could take out of the front side of a, an SK2000 small and it would fit inside the shell of a medium or a large. Now a medium or a large shell actually is the same size, it's the same basic thing there. Um, they just use different thicknesses of foam to make, to differentiate a medium and a large. The back piece of an SK2000 small is a different story though. It actually is a smaller size. It has a thicker foam still, but it won't fit inside the medium or large shells. But anyway, what I'm doing with this one is I'm taking the cardboard off and then I'm going to make a a trace outline for new cardboard. And to help get the cardboard off, what I've basically been doing is I've been hanging this up inside the shower and then taking hot showers and letting the steam work on it for about a week. And then it makes it easier to peel it off. Okay, now I have it off. And what I have underneath here is actually just a plastic cutting board that I got has like a five pack or something at Walmart for like three bucks or something. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this over it and make a trace so that I can make a brand new one of these out of this uh, plastic material. Okay, I have it pinned down and now I can just sort of do a trace around this to mark where I need to cut it. And you're also gonna to wanna to mark where the holes are and then with the pattern traced out, we can cut it. Now well, this is a cutting board, so cutting it can be tough. What I am using is a razor blade, just to go along here and trace the outline with the blade. Okay, and after we cut it out, we can sort of just peel it out here. Okay, and now we have our little cardboard replacement. We can compare it next to the original we can see that they are pretty close. And this right here is the shell of uh, an SK2000 large or medium. Medium would be actually, the shell would be exactly the same size, just with uh, different foam and stuff. Uh, this would fit in somewhat like, like this. And it's not a bad fit. Okay, so here we have the back foam to an SK2000 large, and I've given it the same shower treatment as the fronts to help uh, pull this cardboard out so I can make a trace. So we can use the leftover of the same piece, trace out a couple more, maybe here, maybe we can get both of them out of this spot to uh, finish the cardboard part of our refurbishment. Okay, so now I have my backplate cardboard to use as a template on my cutting board from before. I'm going to use the same sheet as before, and I'm going to cut out a few more uh, for this. First, I'm going to trace it out right up against the line of the other one. And once we have it fully traced, we can unclip it. And we have our trace template to cut it out. Then we want to do the same thing with the last piece. Clamp it down so we can do a trace. And then we can begin to try to cut it out. So let's talk a little bit now about where we can find replacement foam for an SK2000. 
So I don't really know the type of foam that was originally used in the original SK2000s, but I do know that Olympia Composites, which is the top of the line when it comes to uh, building composite versions of these helmet cells uh, in not only their helmets, but in their replacement kits, uh, which go for uh, a good bit of money on their own, uh, EVA closed cell foam. And if we just look on Amazon or eBay, we can find EVA closed cell foam. And the only question is what thickness to get. And uh, that we already know. If it's half an inch, um, th that'll fit inside uh, a size large helmet. Uh, if you have a size medium helmet, then that's gonna go uh, where a thickness of five eighths of an inch. And if you have a size small, it's gonna be three quarters of an inch. Now, some of the other hardware we can find from uh, the regular hardware stores, you know, as long as we know what we're looking for. An exception is gonna be those snaps in the back of the SK2000, which you hook up to your helmet. Uh, those are called helmet dome snap screws. And all helmets seem to have these. So if you have another helmet, you can uh, cannibalize them off the other helmets and build up a stockpile of those if you need to get some. There are places that still sell these, so you can get access to these, even though you can't get them from a regular hardware store. But there are hardware pieces you can get from a regular hardware store. Okay, if you have the shell of an SK2000, uh, you'll know it's two parts. You got this front half and this back half. The only part that keeps those two halves together are the bumpers and the hardware behind the bumpers. Uh, the bumpers you can still find. You can find these on eBay. Uh, you can find uh, people that make these. Uh, Sean Schroeder makes these uh, out of a carbon material. And there are some people that 3D print them, I think. Uh, so you can still get a hold of these uh, bumper pieces. Now, one of the things that's harder to find is on the other side of the bumper, we've got these brackets right here. And here, let me show you the bracket. This is the bracket on the other side of the bumper. Now, unfortunately, I have no idea where you can find these uh, bracket pieces in any amount of quantity easily. Obviously, if you find an old SK, you can strip it for the parts and uh, yank these off of them. But what I have found as a cheap and available uh, replacement are these Stanley bracket mounts. And they just happen to be uh, at the same two inch length and with holes right at the uh, same distance, an inch and a half apart. Now you can find these at Lowe's and they cost about 250 for a pack of four of them. They also come with a few screws. Now there's one thing you need to keep in mind if you go with these though. One of the benefits to these butterfly style uh, hardware pieces is that the screw for the other ends of the bumper is really well designed for it. You put it in and it clicks into place so when you screw it and you have the screw on the other side it's really locked into place. That doesn't happen if you go with one of these cheap ones. Uh, so if you have a screw on the other side that you're trying to screw into here, and you're screwing it on the other side, you know, it can keep on spinning as you spin it. It makes it really hard to get in. You have to really apply some pressure on the back end as you're doing it. So what I would suggest is once you, if you do use something like this, uh, squirt a few shots of super glue or, or putty or something to keep this locked into place. Understand that it's not going to be 100%. Uh, it may eventually break free and you know, you're using it inside a helmet. Stuff happens like that. And if you ever need to uh, adjust this, you might have to pull out some of the foam to get at this to really hold on to this with some uh, pliers to make sure it doesn't spin. You know, you, if you, as long as you hold on to it on both sides here, so you can screw into the other side, no problem. Now, another thing that can be helpful if you if you don't have all the the hardware pieces inside the shell, like maybe some of the screws and bolts across the side here, you can go to your hardware store and make do with uh, just T nuts. 
Now this T-nut is an 8 32nd, uh, quarter of an inch deep, and I found 8 32nd fits most of the standard hardware that's already inside the helmet. That's a good replacement if you're missing one of the uh, threaded inlets. Now if you're missing some of the screws, you can go with uh, some 8 32nd screws. It'll depend on how long you need them. Uh, this one is a half inch and that kind of matches what's inside here. Now if you can't find 8 32nd, I guess you don't have to stress too much. Um, you know, if you did 6 32nd and, and the replacement screws you got were also 6 32nd, that'll work. You know, as long as these two fit together, it'll work. It might not just be interchangeable with what came factory on the helmet. Okay, so here I have a shell. Uh, it's a size large. Uh, it's already put together. But behind it, I have one that is not put together. This one's actually a size small. And we're going to put this together using the spare hardware store parts uh, that we just talked about. Okay. So I'm going to take my T-nuts, I'm going to use the standard mount bracket to space it apart. Now before I do it, like I mentioned, I, I want to put some, some glue on there to help make it harder to move. Just paste some glue around the edge here. Okay, and with a shot of glue inside here, I can place these now on the inside of my helmet. Okay, nice. All right, I want to slide it in, put the other piece over top, and now we're going to use some bumpers that we have to connect it up. So I don't know how well you can see that, but they line up just perfectly with that space, and I can go ahead and put the bumper over top and screw it in. And as long as the screw sizes are correct, and they're long enough and they match the washer, you'll be able to get the bumper on using those parts. And we just got to do the same thing to the other side. Now to barely make contact with the threads, these screws need to be at least half an inch, but I'd recommend going for something higher than that, three quarters or maybe even an inch, uh, to really make sure you can get a good number of threads inside here. Okay, and then once we have the bumpers on, the shell is intact. Okay, and now I actually want to switch back to my size large one that I've been working on, because this is the one I actually want to put the foam in. And this is the foam that we ordered, and now we're going to cut it down so it'll fit inside the black helmet that I'm working on. Okay, what I have here is my new foam. This is half an inch thick to match uh, a size large, and then I have my old foams that I'm going to use as my traces. I'm going to trace this out on top of the new foam and cut it out. And then once it's traced, we can start our razor blade work. Okay, now we can start to look to do the same with the front piece. Okay, now we can start our trace and cut this out of the foam. And as far as the holes go, cutting out these holes, I found just a, a half inch pipe. You know, spun across here over a few turns, can cut into this and pull this out. Okay, now we can get our, our foam that we cut out and start to put it together. Now, I'm going to start with the back piece first, and what we want to do is we cut our one off fold this into a dome and then we're going to sort of lock it in place by adding our piece across the top here and we're going to glue it into place and I'm just going to use some shoe glue um, to, to do that. A little 
clamp to push it down and keep it in place as it's drying. Do the same thing on the other side. And we'll sit and we'll let this dry a little bit. Now just for comparison, this is a factory one, and you can see this is sort of the design that we're going for. Alright, now let's do the other part of the back piece. This is the part that actually screws into the helmet. You just put this in the center. We're going to glue it in just like we're doing with the top. We're going to use the same shoe glue. As long as we make sure we hit the center to the center right here, everything should be good as it fits around. Once we got it placed, we can clamp the back side down too. Alright, now we just have to wait for this to dry. So while it's doing that, now let's work on our front piece. Now the way this gets together, we're going to fold this in like this, and this is sort of our front. And then our side here is going to go down like this, where this is across the front. And the hole here should line up with the hole in the foam, and the same on the other side. Okay, and here for reference is generally a factory one, more or less. So we're trying to get this to end up something like this. Okay, now I've just found out I still have some of this. If you have any of this liquid nail stuff, this is going to work even better than the shoe glue. So I'd recommend using some of this if you have this as well. Make sure that our holes line up with the holes in the foam. Clamp them in. And then we can wait for this to dry as well. And once we have that, we have our pieces to place in the helmet. Okay, now I already put all of the hardware, all those nuts and screws, everywhere I want it on the helmet already. So uh, to, when I put my foam in, I just want to loosen these up and use the same bit. So let's start with the back. Okay, and actually, if you have earpieces that you want to use, now would be the time to put those in right before we do the foam. And then we'll want to loosen these bottom ones on each side as well to get the earpieces in. On these back pieces, you need to use the snap for the for your straps to snap into. Okay, so once you get those side screws slide, uh, screwed in there, you have your back piece somewhat in place. Alright, now what I like to do at this point is add that little top piece. If you've ever seen, there's a little top, little dome piece like this, slightly tucked under the back. I'm just going to add some glue here. Then I'm going to tuck that right in here. Just so the back part is partially covering it, but most of it's going to be covered by the front piece. Okay. And then once we have that, we can worry about putting in that front foam piece. And I have this front foam piece, and it's finished drying out. And it's going to connect from here, here. And two things in front. So it's just going to go in like this. And then we're going to line up our holes on the side here. And 
inside there. And then these red things are going to go behind those screws right here. Okay, now the helmet is mostly together. And all we need to do is screw in the front pieces, but at the same time, this would be where we'd want to pick our cage to put and attach to it as well. And then once you've done it, you're done. And you have a helmet completely refurbished with new foam and new parts from uh, the hardware store.